Our first win with Kamigawa Neon Dynasty with the Ninjutsu deck. What's going on guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code ITRESOLVES10YP for 10% off your entire purchase. What is going on everybody and welcome to the first ever Kamigawa Neon Dynasty standard gameplay video here on the It Resolves channel. I hope you guys are doing exceptionally well. Hopefully you are jumping into the new set as well. We figured, you know, let's start with one of the returning mechanics. Let's start with one of my favorite mechanics as well, Ninjutsu. Guys, Ninjutsu is a sick mechanic. It allows us to do a lot of really cool things. And one of my favorite cards, if you watch my video that went up earlier today, was Nashi Moon Sage's Scion. I had to incorporate this in. I love this card. I think it's going to be really, really good. We're going to test it out today. I should mention, though, this list is based on, it is not the exact list, but it is based on the list by Power Dragon with a couple of minor changes, mostly just to include the Nashi, because I do think Nashi is going to be a really sick card. So uh, credit where credit's due. Power Dragon, thank you so much for sharing your ninjutsu list. Let's talk about this, guys. We got a lot of new cards here. So obviously, just to clarify, the ninjutsu mechanic basically says you can return, uh, pay a cost and return an unblocked attacking creature to your hand. And essentially you replace it with the card that you activated the ninjutsu uh, ability on so essentially if we've got like an unblocked soaring thought thief we get to throw out a nashi instead if we pay that cost and then usually there's some kind of ability along with it uh, so we'll see in the early turns of the game we've got a little bit of disruption and some things that hopefully we'll be able to get in for some damage as an example we've got merfolk wind robber nice little one one flyer nothing too crazy but it can get in on turn two very quickly and that's exactly what we want to do network disruptor a brand new card it taps down target permanent on the opponent's side of the field now that could be a land or more importantly a creature if we have a blocker on the field on the opponent's end we could just tap that down get in for the attack as we need to uh thousand face shadow our first card with ninjutsu that we're going to be looking at is the one one for one we can just play this out as a one drop creature but when it enters the battlefield from your hand if it's attacking create a token copy that is a copy of another target attacking creature the token enters the battlefield tapped and attacking as well so we can actually spread out and kind of go wide and hopefully double up on some effects there now for disruption we do have spell pierce as a one of i did trim down on this because i don't know how viable this is going to be in the long term uh and then fading hope as well just as an opportunity to bounce some stuff get it off the field so again we can push through for the attack in the two drop slot here again we've got quite a number of new cards but we'll start with the old we've got soaring thought thief here as a full four of it's a nice flash flyer again that evasion is really important it does have the mill so if we do play any other rogues or anything like that uh, we get the opportunity to mill the opponent uh, for just a couple cards which could be very useful uh, and then if we have eight or more cards in uh, their graveyard, if an opponent does, rogues we control get plus one plus zero, which isn't hugely beneficial to be honest, but the fact that this has flash and flying is actually quite good. Uh, the other old card that we have seen before is obviously Infernal Grasp. A little bit of disruption just to get creatures off the battlefield and again continue the uh, hopeful onslaught of this deck. Uh, Silver Fur Master, a brand new one. Master Splinter is here. It's a 2 2 for 2 with an Ninjutsu of one blue and one black. Ninjutsu abilities you cast cost one less to activate, and other ninja and rogue creatures you control get plus one plus one. Obviously, that's going to bolster up our board, cheapen up our cost, and hopefully be able to really provide an engine for the list. Uh, Nizumi Prowler, an interesting one here. It does have the ninjutsu cost of one and a black, but when it enters the battlefield, target creature you control gains death touch and lifelink until the end of the turn. This could be really helpful just to help clear the board a little bit. Think of this as kind of a removal spell. It can target itself if we need to, so that is certainly a possibility as well. Uh, finally, we have the Silencer here. It's a 2-1 for 2 with a ninjutsu of 2. When it deals combat damage to a player, you may discard a creature card. If you do, destroy target creature or planeswalker that player controls. That planeswalker is very key for us because we don't have a lot of ways to deal with planeswalkers other than just attacking in, and we really want to be attacking the player. So we're going to shoot for uh, hopefully getting rid of some of those with the Silencer. We do have Prosperous Thief here in the 3 drop slot. Uh, whenever uh, one or more ninja or rogue creatures deals combat damage to a player, you get to create a treasure token. 
So what this will hopefully be able to do is ramp us into some of our other spells, really get a lot of ninjutsu action going as well. We do have one of Biting Palm Ninja 3-3. When it deals combat damage to a player, you, rem you can remove a menace counter from it, which it enters with that menace counter. Uh, when you do, that player reveals their hand and you choose a non-land card from it, you get to exile that card. So a little bit of hand disruption here. Nashi is my favorite. I love Nashi. This card is sick. Basically, when it attacks and deals damage to a player, uh, we get to exile the top card of our deck and their deck and pay life to, p to cast one of those cards that turn. Uh, now, that can be really good. I talked about this uh, in my build around video that I released earlier today, and I am very excited to try this one out. Uh, we do have Kaito, uh, very, very interesting Planeswalker. Lots to talk about here. I'm going to kind of gloss over it a little bit, but the most important thing I want to talk about is that minus two uh, that allows us to get a 1 1 that cannot be blocked. That makes it really, really easy for us to get the ninjutsu mechanic going because they can't block the creature, which means after that blocker's step is declared, we just throw those ninjutsu uh, activations on there and hopefully get some extra stuff. Uh, Agadim's Awakening should be able to bring a lot of stuff back for us if we do run into sweepers, which we do expect, of course. And then there's a lot of interesting stuff here in the lands. So first and foremost, we've got the Abandoned Mire, does have the channel ability as does the Soaring City, this one says mill three cards, then return a creature or planeswalker card from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, the ability costs one less to activate for each legendary creature we control. Nashi certainly helps with that, uh, uh, mainly in that uh, arena. Hive of the Eye Tyrant and Hall of the Storm Giants is here, but the, the Soaring City is also an interesting one. Return target artifact creature enchantment or planeswalker to its owner's hand. And again, that's that same cost reduction mechanic. This is really here to kind of get stuff out of the way, hopefully slow down and tempo out the opponent while we're gaining a lot of extra value. So that was a lot. That was a long deck tech. There's a lot of new cards in this one. Uh, we are going to hopefully get in a few games here, have some fun with this one, and then we're going to try and get as much gameplay recorded as possible. My goal is to get as much up this weekend as we can for you guys. So let's jump straight into game one. All right, guys, here we are for game number one, and this is definitely a keep. We've got some of the early game stuff. We've even got that Soaring Thought Thief, so I'm feeling pretty good about keeping this. One thing I want to point out, guys, as we do jump into game one, we're going to be learning with this deck. We're going to be learning a lot in the next couple of videos here because we don't know the cards yet, so we're going to be seeing how they interact. It will take some, uh, some time for me to get these cards down and get the decks down as well as I would like. Uh, and with that in mind, we're going to see a lot of misplays. I'm just quelling that now because I know for a fact we are going to see a lot of that. So please don't stress too much about it. Uh, but keep in mind that we're all here to learn together. We're all going to have a fun time and hopefully enjoy this new set. So uh, I think I'm going to go this route. Uh, we're going to stick with the Wind Robber for now. I like the idea of being able to ninjutsu this later. The Thousand Face Shadow is very unique in that um, it's kind of got a pretty big cost differential between its normal cost and then the ninjutsu cost, uh, which is interesting solely because um, a lot of them are kind of similar, like, you know, maybe two and two or two and three or, you know, something along those lines, whereas that's, that obviously gives us not just early game value, but then the late game value as well. Let's go ahead and Soaring Thought Thief here. Seems pretty straightforward. Um, we can just drop this down. Uh, I think I'll go ahead and drop the uh, the wind the other wind robber here, and then attack in. It looks like we're against the ramp style deck, which is gonna be interesting. Um, we're going to mill a couple more cards here, though, which is quite nice. And then here we just get to leave up another Soaring Thought Thief. Fully expect that they've got some amount of uh, removal in the deck. We've obviously seen black. They're not playing the second black here, though, which is quite interesting. All right. Let's see what they target. Obviously going to be the uh, Soaring Thought Thief here, but let's go ahead and flash in another one. Seems pretty straightforward. All right. Um, hmm. Interesting, interesting. Okay, uh, so I am going to take the three here. And again, we're kind of learning, so we're going to do the best we can. We're going to attack in. Just going to mill a few cards, which is fantastic. Can we? Yes. So let's go ahead and send this back to hand and ninjutsu out this. 
which creates a token copy of this. Seems pretty good. I really like that thousand face shadow. <laughs> that seems really cool. All right. Uh, so they are going to get a land here, but crucially, we they really need to sweep the board if they're going to do too much here, and it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. Now, I might be wrong. They do have enough, but that is not going to do it. Awesome. All right, so let's throw the land out. That's really good. Um, okay. Well, with that in mind... Um, I think we play this. Uh, let's play this. We'll tap this down for the time being. Um, we'll send this and this here and this and this here. I think that's okay. Uh, so this is going to mill quite a number of cards here and give us that power buff, which is quite helpful. And let's see where they block. I'm kind of curious. Perfect. Okay. Uh, so, we're going to do this, uh, and again, send this back to hand, and now we've got this out to, uh, really buff up our board again. Perfect. So we get rid of Loth, we still have a very commanding board presence, and, uh, yeah, I feel pretty solid about this. Now, they do have a Storm the Festival here, but it doesn't look like they're going to have the mana to cast it, um, and while this does have Death Touch, Loth isn't going to do it, I don't believe. All right, uh, let's make sure. Ooh, interesting. Okay. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, I think we just attack in. We can get rid of the Lolth, uh, which isn't necessarily a bad idea, to be honest. Um, hmm. Let's attack here, here, and here at them. You know what? Let's just send it all at them. Let's just see what happens here. I think we're in a position where if we do lose a creature or two, it's not the end of the world. The unblocked creature can actually be swapped out here if we need to, um, but I feel okay about this. They're going to take at minimum two, uh, which isn't a lot, but that's okay. We do have these, but I plan on playing some of these spells, so I wasn't activating this on purpose. Okay. Okay. Um... So we can do this, but that doesn't seem very good for us. Hmm. Yeah, I'm just going to let this through. We're going to take the four, which is a good bit to take. Uh, and then they do, of course, lose a couple of their things here. So that's helpful. We'll resolve these. They all go back here. That's kind of fine. I don't really care. Um, and we'll just throw these all out. Cool. So we can sacrifice these to draw a card if we need to, um, which could be very helpful depending on how this actually goes. But truthfully, we're just trying to flood the board to get in as much damage as we can. So I think this makes the most sense. These are fine. They can't really do too much uh, because we all have flying. So <laughs> that's pretty nice. Uh, the menace creatures or the little spiders here are a bit annoying, but that shouldn't win them the game. So feel pretty good about this. All right, perfect. So we're going to drop this, tap one of the spiders, and then just attack in. Yeah. Um, seems pretty straightforward to me. Uh, let's all attack here. We're going to mill quite a bit more cards here. We actually are milling a good bit with these uh, Soaring Thought Thieves, which is fascinating. Thinking they may have lost, uh, given their emoji was there. Uh, yeah. Awesome. We did it. Guys, our first win with Kamigawa Neon Dynasty with the Ninjutsu deck. We didn't get to see Nashi, but I'm hoping we can in later games. Let's go ahead and jump into game two right now. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. And uh, this is a bit of an interesting one, but I do think we can try and keep this here. We'll see how it goes. Uh, let's go ahead and throw this out. Since we don't have another one drop, I am going to go ahead and throw this one out. Um, and we'll see how this goes. Looks like zombies is going to be the matchup. Uh, perfect. That's actually quite helpful. Um, hmm. I think we just play this out. It's kind of a straightforward card here, but I actually think that that's perfect. Uh, we can actually just lord up a lot of our stuff here, and uh, theoretically, we should be okay. 
Very nice. That's cool. They are not willing to throw that out. Okay, interesting. I'm gonna throw this down. Uh, we're gonna throw this down. Again, just to lord up as best we can. Um, and I think we'll do this. Now here's kind of the fun part. That's fine. What we can do is uh, ninjutsu this back to our hand so we can play it later and then give this death touch and life link. So we not only kill this, but then gain some life in the process. That seems pretty good. Uh, and it's, this is just a 5-3, <laughs> uh, which is really good. So that got some damage in as well. Uh, yeah, I really like this. If we need to, we do have the silencer as well that can deal with one of these two. Um, in fact, probably just that, but... Okay. Uh, yeah, we'll just throw this down. The flare. Uh, let's see. Hmm. So I think we just attack here. Although we do have the Agonemes Awakening, but I do think this is just the correct attack. So we'll do this. They can just block here uh, and trade this off. That's okay. It's not great for us, of course, but it's fine. Um, yeah, go for it. <clears throat> okay. Uh, yes. All right. Cool. They got us there. Let's do this. I think we needed to get stuff off the field here a little bit, though, so I'm just going to keep flooding the board. I don't know if that's correct. Again, we're kind of learning a little bit as we go, but I feel like it's okay to do this because the flyers really get in there for a lot of damage. We don't particularly want to attack with the uh, Master Splinters here, so I kind of want to keep these going. Um, and truthfully, now we can just kind of block if we need to, I guess. There's the Necro Duality, which we did 100% expect. Uh, and that is kind of annoying, but that's actually quite helpful. Um, hmm. All right, uh, let's do this first. Let's just see what happens here. I'm just going to block that straight up. Uh, okay, and I'm just going to go ahead and kill this. Let's get that off the field. That's going to power up real quick, so I am not really interested in uh, taking the damage. I'm also going to play this out so we can get the Hive of the Eye Tyrant actually active here. Um, while it's not the most exciting card against them, because they do have the Necro Duality, so they're going to get two creatures every time they play one, uh, we still have a pretty dominant threat here, and this is going to be able to attack in, so I feel okay about just going for it there. That's really good. Um... Yeah, I think we just throw this down. We tap this down. And I think the play is honestly just to attack in with everything. So they can kill something, but they're down to one. <laughs> uh, and we have flyers here, so I think we're okay. Uh, we'll see, of course, but I think we'll be okay here. Yep, that's all fine. Uh, they're not gaining life, which is very important because now we should be able to kill them. <laughs> uh, and in fact, that's a really good option to do so. Okay. So they've got one card in hand. It could only be a like one a single removal spell, I think. So this should just automatically kill. Okay. Uh, let's do this on our own then here. I guess we should have done this first, but that's okay. They get two of these, which is kind of uh, important. Yep. They're deciding if they want to exploit, but there's nothing to exploit, I don't think, that I'm aware of. Like, this just happens, so I I'm not really sure what they are uh, considering here. And I mean, we see them doing their thing. I'm very curious about this. All right. That was weird. Not really sure what was going on there. All right, so they can double block, which is very good. That survives for a turn, uh, because again, the Soaring Thought Thief 
still is a solid answer here, given they don't have another flyer. That was perfect for them. Absolutely perfect. All of this is kind of okay. Um, so we block these two. We take a good bit, but we just attack in the air next turn. We only have to deal one damage, so this is perfect. Another win, guys. We are doing it. Let's see if we can go for a game three. All right, guys, here we are for game number three. This will most likely be our final game. Don't love this hand, I'll be honest, but I think we should try it just to see what the capabilities are here. This is obviously much more of a disruptive hand. Uh, and it looks like we might be against creature deck, which is kind of unfortunate for us, but we'll see what we can do. I'm actually, yeah, I think we throw this out now. Given that this is probably a creature deck, I'm not really expecting that they will have many uh, non-creature spells unless they are fight spells. So we want to save this for a pretty opportune time, but I don't think now is that time. So, well, missed opportunity. <laughs> I was definitely incorrect, but that's okay. Uh, all right. Uh, I think we just attack in here. I'm gonna wait. Uh, let's see what they do. We can Infernal Grasp the Wolf if we need to. Uh, and I think worst case scenario, this gives us some options. I do expect them to probably fight off the Disruptor at some point here. All right, perfect. We'll just Spell Pierce that. We can kill this at a later time. I'm not necessarily worried about doing that now, but the Inscription of Ruin discarding a couple cards is definitely a problem. And so it's something we need to uh, deal with here. All right, uh, let's attack in. I'm going to go ahead and do this. Um, we'll swap this out. That's going to deal damage and allow us to discard this to kill the 2-2, uh, which I think is definitely worth it. Again, we do expect them to have fight spells. They can throw counters around. I'm not really looking for them to uh, be able to do that too often, so I want to keep them out of that as best we can. Okay, uh, let's go Awakening on the land, and then let's do this. So the cool thing about this is he just phases out at the end of the turn, uh, which makes him very, very difficult to deal with. Um, they kind of have to do it at instant speed, uh, and it's going to be a bit tricky for them, so I'm very happy about that. This is unblockable as well, uh, so again, no matter what we draw, we should be able to get some stuff going here. Okay. Uh, interesting. Well, with that in mind, I think I'm just going to throw this out. Keep it kind of simple. Uh, let's draw a card. Oh, crap. <laughs> that was a bit of a mistake. Okay, yeah, we definitely should have just waited there, but that's okay. Just a mistake on my end. Fine, by me. Let's get an attack in. What we should have done is waited to attack. I did not fully read the ability, so that was just a mistake. And this does, uh, this is only during the first turn that I guess it's played, so just keeping that in mind. All right, let's see what they do here. Looks like they're going to attack. That's fine. I'm actually going to Fading Hope this. We'll just slow him down a little bit here. I'm not really worried about uh, Infernal Grasping a little guy like that. It's not that powerful of a spell, so I'd rather just kind of wait uh, and tie up their mana in it potentially later on. So they can just replay it here, but... All right. Now this... The token is something I am much more interested in killing. However, now I kind of wish we had saved that Fading Hope, I'll be honest. Um, but I do think we just go ahead and kill this now. Not something I'm really interested in fighting off. Interesting. Okay. Um, let's go here. Let's go here. Pretty straightforward. Get rid of the uh, Renin 7, which is definitely a card I am scared of. Uh, <laughs> and... Yeah, I think we just pass. This is actually quite a good card for us to have. Um, so we can start attacking in the air. That's going to be much more difficult for them to deal with. That's a scary card, for sure. Uh, this is okay. We've got another one in hand here, so I'm actually okay with this. We're going to wait till the end step and play the Soaring Thought Thief, of course. Let's get that down. Perfect. Uh... 
We're gonna go ahead and play this. I'll attack in now. Gonna mill a couple cards. Crucially, what I'd love for them to do is invest mana in this, and then we just like fading hope it or something. Um, hmm. Okay. Well, I think we are on the tempo plan, so I think we just wait now. I don't think we actually play this out. Now, we do have to discard a card to utilize this, but crucially with Kaito, that's not all that impossible to do. Uh, so that's fine. I'm gonna let this hit, I think. If they've got another big spell, I'm a little more worried about whatever they have coming next and not this. So we're gonna see what they do here. Um, we can still Fading Hope this, which is fine. But instead, we're gonna Fading Hope our own thing. I think. Yeah, let's do that. Let's throw this back into our hand here. Uh, so they're gonna kill their own Oven Mold Oddity, but then get it back, obviously. Uh, ooh. That's really hard to pass up. I think I have to keep that. Uh, this obviously, so they do just get, oh no, they're gonna get Ren and Seven back. Okay, now that makes sense. Uh, definitely makes sense, but I think we can deal with this. All right. Um, sorry guys, I am thinking hard, I think. Let's throw the ninja out. Let's do this, and we are going to have to discard a card here, but I think that that's okay. The question is, which of these is more important? Oh, no, we don't have to discard a card. Oh, we just discard it. Duh. I'm an idiot. <laughs> no, that's okay. We don't have to discard a card, which is very, very good. And we do have an unblockable creature here that can get through for some damage. Now, they get the Oven Mold Oddity back, which is not good for us, but... Not dead yet. We're pretty dang close because they can transform this at some point and it has haste. So they're going to kill Kaito. It does get a counter. Um, it has trample, so there's no point in blocking. Interesting. I really like that this can still block. That's actually really nice. Um, So we're gonna attack and I think so that's unblockable let's make sure we have full control here we're gonna do this do this and we can actually just kill this uh, let's see I think this is the right play I hate to discard that because that's such a big card for us, but I think we just have to get rid of this. Truthfully, right now, like an Agadim's Awakening would be amazing. Okay, they're gonna sacrifice it. That was a very, very solid play on their end because that just means we don't really get the value from it, but uh, I think we just had to, otherwise we were gonna die. So <laughs> there wasn't really much of an option there. Uh, I think this one's slipping away based on the fact that they just have bigger, better cards than we do. Uh, in terms of power level, like, they just have huge stuff. Wow, okay. I mean, yeah. That's really good. I really wish we could have gotten an attack in with the haul, but, uh, one thing to note about this deck is the mana is a little bit tight. Uh, as it should be, it's a pretty low-cost deck, but the Hall of the Storm Giants is an interesting include here. All right, we got one more turn. Uh, unfortunately, that is not going to do it. So close to an undefeated run, guys, but unfortunately, we are just not going to get there. I'm going to go ahead and concede. It's cool. Let's chat about the list. All right, guys, so first and foremost, I do want to just say... 
this set is awesome. I can't wait to dig my hands further into this list or into these decks and uh, all the new cards that we got from this set. It's going to be really awesome. Ninjutsu really is one of my favorite mechanics, and it's great to see it back here. We did get two out of the three uh, wins, which isn't too bad considering uh, this is a relatively new deck. We're still learning it and all that stuff. Uh, could we have played better? Absolutely. Uh, I, I don't think there's a doubt about that, but uh, we did okay, and I'm pretty happy with that. I actually really like this list. It feels like the old Demir Rogues list, especially with the Soaring Thought Thief include, but it feels a lot more proactive versus much more reactive, I think, on the initial Rogues end. Um, and maybe that's just uh, my subset of games that felt that way, but it definitely feels like there's a lot going on here. You get such good repeated value from that ninjutsu mechanic that you can just, you know, play something out, get an attack in, bounce it back to your hand, get to do it again. Uh, absolutely love that. I think it's fantastic. Kaido, an all-star. We did not get to see Nashi do his thing. That's the one hiccup that I have. Now, we do only have it as a two of in the list because it is a legendary creature, but was really hoping to see that uh, hopefully take off. Regardless, though, absolutely a blast to play this list. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Again, thank you to Power Dragon for giving us the initial kind of template for this list. Uh, this is not his version of the deck. This is just my own uh, addition with the Nashi here. But all that to say, fantastic, guys. I can't wait to jump into more decks. Please stay tuned. We will have more gameplay going up uh, on the next few days here. Maybe even double up on a day or two, but we'll we'll get to that later. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon.